So again, why why so difficult for us to to embrace non-duality? As we mentioned, one reason may be the strong opposition to Advaita Vedanta for centuries, which everyone, including some of the Gaudias, may still identify as non the only form of non-dualism or even relate to Vedanta and not relate ourselves with that. But another reason to this connection may be that, to be directly and honest, that probably most of us were not taught to conceive things in that way, to think in non-dual terms, mm-hmm. to learn to appreciate how, in the words of Richard Rohr, everything belongs. Mm-hmm. He has a book with that title on this topic of non-dualism. So many times we were actually taught to distinguish instead of seeing everything the unity of everything and how everything belongs many times we have been taught to distinguish what belongs and what does not belong who belongs who does not belong mm-hmm. so then we have a right to exclude those who do not belong mm-hmm. so so non-dual thinking mm-hmm. is that we are trying to present here is not so much a matter of presentation, how to present things with a new language. We are not here proposing some fancy alternative way of talking about things. It's mostly a matter of conception, to learn to conceive things in a proper way, to see reality as non-dual. If we, if we don't have the proper conception in place, we cannot present that to others. So it's not a matter of presentation, but first it's a matter of conception. One percent thinks in certain way because one conceives things in certain way. Mm-hmm. So how do we understand that God is everywhere and that reality is non-dual? First we have to go there. Which is our conception of that? Mm-hmm. How do we make that fit into our go- our Gaudiya landscape, you know, into our Gaudiya glossary and descriptions? Mm-hmm. Yes, God is infinite, so there are endless possibilities in Him. Of course, there is diversity in all directions and therefore God can be personal and impersonal. We have Brahman there, we have Bhagavan there. But again, all this plays out on a non-dual basis. Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan are all features on the same Advai, Gyantatva or non-dual reality. So by speaking about non-dual thinking and just clarifying just in case we are not trying just to merely change the language to reach new audiences let's speak in a new cool contemporary updated way new agey or whatever and we are not either changing the philosophy an original concept of our tradition as we are seeing this idea of non-dual thinking is rooted in our very tradition and of course these two are not the only two these are not the only two options just adjusting for the sake of outreach or distorting the the teaching. There's not just one or two black and white. There's a third one. And again, it's a change in the conception, not necessarily a deviation from the conception, not necessarily a a matter of presentation. (laughs) But we need to change the conception. Remember, we gave a class on Sambanda a few weeks ago, or months. How do we conceive the concept, that Sambanda, not only receiving information, but how we are conceiving that? Hmm? A new language is not necessarily... To have a new language of, to express something is not necessarily for reaching out other people, or f- but for making things the, for making the process relevant for us. Mm-hmm. 